Hello, my dear students. Today I will be discussing on Unit Three. It has chapters uh, like uh, uh, trusses and uh, strain energy and deflection. So first, I will be discussing on trusses. Uh, what is truss and what are the different types of trusses and uh, what is determinate and indeterminate trusses and uh, how to analyze the determinate trusses. So first, let us see what is uh, truss. A truss is one of the major types of engine. Engineering structures, which provides a practical and economical solution for many engineering constructions, especially in the design of bridges and buildings that demand large spans. Where there is a large spans, can uh, go uh, with the uh, trusses, mainly in the design of bridges and uh, buildings. Uh, a truss is a structure. Uh, it is composed of uh, slender members joined together at their end points. Or or it is a framework composed of members joined at their ends to form a rigid structure okay it is a um, i mean it is a structure composed of uh, uh, the members joined together at their end points or it can also be a framework composed of members joined at their ends to form a rigid structure uh, the joint connections are usually formed by bolting or welding the ends of the members to a common plate Called gazette. Okay, so these joints are usually connected by bolting or welding, and uh, this uh, the welding the ends of the members to the common plate is called as gazette. Then. Um, uh, joints uh, maybe they are uh, like uh, welded joints or riveted joints or bolted and pinned uh, pin joints. Uh, the uh, simple one, the first one is the planar trusses, which is a single plane and is often used to support roof or bridges. This is the very simple truss, planar truss, and uh, it is a single plane and mainly used to support roof and even bridges. So you can see here, this is a plane truss. Uh, members lie in a single plane you can see here this is the purling this is the plane truss you can see here these are the members okay so uh, this is a roof truss okay this is an example for roof truss you can see how these members are joined together like this okay and uh, now first we'll see what is roof truss uh, they are often used as part of an industrial building frame you can see here in this figure this is a roof and these are the purling Lines and this is a gusset plate okay this is top cord and this is the bottom cord knee brace this is the span of the truss and this is the beam uh, so roof load is transmitted to the truss at the joints by means of a series of purlins you can see here this roof load is transferred uh, by means of uh, uh, through the purlins okay um, uh, to keep the frame rigid and thereby capable of resisting horizontal wind forces knee braces are uh, sometimes used at uh, uh, sub at the supporting column okay here this is provided to resist the horizontal forces like wind forces uh, etc and uh, this is the bridge trusses here it is seen that a load on the deck is first transmitted to stringers then to floor beams and finally to the joints of the two supporting side trusses you can see here this is a bridge truss and uh, here there are different parts top cord and uh, this is sway bracing here and uh, top lateral bracing then portal bracing these are the stringers here you can see these are the stringers and portal end support this is the floor beam here you can see this is the floor beam and this is the panel and bottom cord and deck okay so here uh, uh, the top and bottom cords of this uh, 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 side trusses are connected by top and bottom lateral bracing which serves to resist the lateral forces caused by wind and sideway caused by moving vehicles on the bridge. Uh, additional stability is provided by the portal and sway bracing as in the case of many long span 
trusses, a roller is provided at one end of the bridge truss to allow for thermal expansion. Here, in one end of this, you can see here, this is the roller support is provided in order to uh, allow the uh, allow for the thermal expansion. This is about the bridge trusses. Uh, while designing these uh, trusses, we have to do uh, make some assumptions. So some of the assumptions are like this: the members are joined together by smooth pins and all loading are applied at the joints and due to the um, these two assumptions each truss member act as an axial force member only these are the two assumptions one is the members are joined together by smooth pins and second one is all loadings are applied at the joints then um, there are different types of the trusses the first one is the simple truss and second one is compound or complex truss so let us see first what is simple truss. Uh, simple truss, uh, it is mainly used to prevent collapse. The framework of a truss must be rigid. Here, the framework of the truss must be rigid. Basic element of a plain truss is a triangle. Here, it is usually the shape of this uh, truss is a triangle. The simplest framework that is rigid or a stable is a triangle. Simple dresses do not have consist entirely of uh, triangles. You can see here, these are the uh, simple dress. You can see here, this is the triangle and uh, these are connected by the different members. And here also, basically it is a triangle, but after that it is connected by the members to form a rigid frame. Okay, then compound truss. It is formed by connecting two or more simple truss together. Often, this type of truss is used to support loads acting over a larger span as it is cheaper to construct a lighter compound truss than a heavier simple truss. Okay, so this is about compound truss. Here, it is mainly used to support loads acting over a larger span. Okay, as it is cheaper to construct a lighter compound truss than a heavier simple dress. You can see here there are different types of compound dresses. These are the simple uh uh, trusses uh, which are joined together and here also you can see this is a simple truss and uh, this is the secondary simple truss and this is the secondary simple truss. So here uh, this type 1 here this the trusses may be connected by a common joint and bar. Here it is mainly connected by the joints or the bar and type 2 these trusses may be joined by 3 bars okay. Um, uh, here uh, it is connected by 3 bars and in the type 3, in this type, the trusses may be joined uh, where bars of a large span truss called the main truss have been substituted by simple truss called secondary trusses. You can see here, these are the secondary trusses, okay, which are joined together to form the main simple truss. So, this is about the compound trusses. Now, um, uh, three bars uh, joined by pins at their end is called as a rigid frame. You can see here these three bars are joined at the pins. You can see here this is joined at the pins here, here, here at their ends called a rigid frame. This is a rigid frame. No non-collapsible and deformation of the members due to induced uh, internal strain is negligible. Here there is no collapsible, uh, there is no deformation because it is properly uh, joined and it is a rigid frame. Uh, four or more bars, it forms a polygon and it is a non-rigid frame. Okay, you can see here, this is more than three bars, four bars are there. Sometimes more than four bars, it, it creates a, a polygon. It is a non-rigid frame. By forming more triangles, non-rigid frame can be make it rigid or stable. Okay, so you can clearly make out what is the rigid frame, what is non-rigid frame. In the rigid frame, there are only three bars which are joined by pins at their ends and here there is no deformation but in the case of uh, non-rigid frame what happened there will be more than um, 
three parts or four or more parts polygon and uh, here uh, uh, this is non rigid but by forming more triangles non rigid frame can be make it rigid or stable you can see here this is again it is a triangle here again this is triangle 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 so by forming more triangle this can be make it as rigid or stable now uh, we'll see what are the types of frames though there are many types of frames at from the analysis this point of view the frames may be classified into the following two groups the first one is perfect frame and second one is the imperfect frame so first we'll see what is perfect frame a perfect frame is that which is made up of members just sufficient to keep it in equilibrium when loaded without any change in its shape as the name itself indicates it is perfect means it is uh, uh, sufficient to keep uh the members uh, i mean in the equilibrium when it is loaded without there is any changes in its uh, shape you can see here this is a perfect frame this is properly um, a joint and it is in equilibrium position so uh, the simplest perfect frame is a triangle which contains three members uh, here you can see and three joints uh, here uh if such a structure is loaded its shape will not be distorted thus for three jointed frame there should be three members to prevent any distortion if there are three if it is a three jointed frame then there should be three members to prevent the distortion otherwise the member will not be perfect it may collapse it will be further noticed that if we want to increase a joint to a triangular frame we require two members as shown uh, in the figure you can see here okay if we want to increase the joint then to the triangular frame then uh, it we require two members here 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 uh, as shown by the dotted lines thus we can see that for every additional joint to the triangular frame two members are required so suppose if you want to increase the joint then uh, there will be two members are uh, is required then only that frame becomes stable otherwise it is unstable okay then we'll see what is uh, huh, how you can uh, classify whether it is a perfect frame or imperfect frame if the number of the members in the perfect frame may also be expressed by the relation here this is given by the relation m is equal to 2j minus r here m is equal to number of members j is equal to number of the joints and r is equal to number of reactions okay if m is equal to 2j minus r then you can say that the member is a perfect uh, frame the, the frame is a perfect frame otherwise it is imperfect frame so let us see what is imperfect frame an imperfect frame is that which does not satisfy the equation that means m is equal to 2j minus r it is not equal to m is equal to 2j minus r or in other words it is a frame in which the number of members are more or less than 2j minus r okay so this m is not equal to 2j minus r it may be more or it may be less than 2j minus r so based on this more or less than again there are two types of imperfect frames the first one is the deficient frame and second one is the redundant frame so what is this deficient frame a deficient frame is an imperfect frame in which the number of members are less than 2j minus r as the name itself it indicates deficient means here the number of the members uh, are less than the uh, equation 2j minus r if it is a redundant frame then uh, the a number of members are more than 2j minus r okay usually our reaction number of the reactions are 3 that's why i have written 2j minus 3 number of reactions summation of vertical forces equal to 0 summation of horizontal forces equal to 0 and summation of m is equal to 0 okay so mainly perfect frame is uh, uh, if m is equal to 2j minus r then you can say that it is a perfect frame otherwise it is imperfect frame means m is equal to m 
is not equal to 2j minus r. If it is less than 2j minus r, then it is called as deficient trim. And if it is more than 2j minus r, then it is called as redundant trim. Okay. I hope all of you now understood what is uh, uh, the perfect trim and what is imperfect trim. Next class, uh, I will be discussing about what is statically determinate frame and statically indeterminate frame. I hope all of you understood. Thank you.